We all dread seeing a program crashing out of nowhere, maybe just for a little little problem. But it doesn't need to be like that. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can handle errors the right way. So, first of all, what is an exception? Basically, an exception is raised by Python where something that is not supposed to happen, happens. In other words, an error. Let's say you try to access an index that doesn't exist from a list, or maybe you try to access a variable that does not exist. In this case, Python will stop the program with an error or exception. Sometimes these errors are needed and wanted to debug or to actually stop the program because something wrong happened, but sometimes you don't want Python to stop everything. You just want to let the user know that something wrong happened or that they did something wrong and let Python go ahead with what it's doing. So when you write a piece of code where you think that a specific error could occur, you should write it inside the try except block in order to cut the error. Okay. So let's say you've got a list, something like my list zero, one, two, three. Okay. And if you try to access the index four, this would happen. So my list four, if I go down here and run it, you can see that the program stopped and this, the traceback with what happened is shown and then the index error here. But sometimes you don't want the program to stop like that. Okay. So you just need to write this inside a try except block like that. And then print here something like warning index out of range, something like that. Okay. If we actually print something down here, we'll see that the program is now not stopped. As you can see, warning in this out of range after. So the program didn't stop here. You just show the user this message, but then you still carry on with the program. Doing this would cut all the errors because you didn't specify any error here. Okay. So if you want to specify the error to cut, you just need to write it like that without the parentheses. In this case, this will still work, but let's say that you don't have the list. So in this case, the error is not going to be index error, but it's going to be name error. Okay. And the name error is not good. So as you can see, the name error is still here. But if you were to remove this, the name error is going to be good and the index out of range will be shown, but this is not right because this is not the index out of range. This is the name error because the list doesn't exist. Okay. So let's go back here by doing this, you sort of print what you want. So in this case, index out of range is the same thing, but you could print something like wrong index or something like that. But what about if you want to print the actual Python error without the tracebacks or without stopping the program, you can do something like as error like that and here you can just write error. Okay. If we uncomment the, this, you see list index out of range. This is the default error message. Okay. So you can do this. And if you want, don't want to specify the error, but you still want to use the as keyword here, you just need to write exception, something like that, which is the base class, as you can see, common base class for all no ex exceptions. Okay. So exception, and this will cut all the exceptions. In this case, we cut the list out of range and it will cut the error. You can see name, my list is not defined, but it doesn't stop the program. It just prints the default message. Okay. After this, let's see how we can specify different pieces of code to run according to the error that occurred. So let's go actually back to this. Okay. So if we wanted to specify another piece of code to run, you could do something like another accept and then name error. And down here, we can write something like warning name error, something like that. Okay. If we print that, you'll see that name error because we don't have the list, but if we have the list and the, there is a problem with the index, index out of range. Okay. So you are running two pieces of code, one piece of code, if the index error occurs and this piece of code, if this error occurs. Okay. Really, really cool. But what about if you want to run the same piece of code, if just certain errors occur, you just need to write something like this. So you just need to write a tuple index name error, something like that. And now this is run. So actually change this index or name error. This is run if either of those occurs All the other exceptions are not uh, handled. Okay. But in this case, we're handling these exceptions with the same piece of code down here. Then there are also two other really interesting yet not really famous parts, you know, the try except block, which are else and finally. Okay. So else that you write down here executes some code if no exceptions are raised. Okay. So in this case, no errors, something like that, just if no errors are found. So in this case, this is not printed, but if you were to do something like two, okay, no errors. Then the finally always runs, even if you've got an error, I always run. So in this case, we don't have errors down here. As you can see, no errors, I always run, but let's say you've got the error. I always run and the no errors 
didn't run because this is uh, uh, in the else, okay? Of course, here I used both together, but you can use only finally, only else, or even none of them, okay? The only required are try and accept. So apart from catching and handling the default errors, you can even raise your own, maybe because there isn't an error built in for that specific scenario, or you want the piece of code to raise an error if something happens. Maybe the piece of code will never raise an error, but you want to raise that error, okay? Especially if you want to make sure you don't make mistakes during the development of a project. And by raising that error, you know for sure that you did something wrong because the program sort of crashes and you can't overlook that, okay? So to raise an error, you just need to use the keyword raise. So let's comment this out. You can do something like word, hello, if word equal, hello, then I want to raise this exception. I'm gonna use the base exception. Hello is not valid, okay? So this would have never raised an exception, but in this case, we are going to do that manually. Let's say that, that. So as you can see, exception, hello is not valid, okay? And you could also use a built-in exception type and raise that one. So in this case, this doesn't make sense, but you can do something like index error, hello is not valid. So as you can see, index error, hello is not valid, which doesn't make sense here, but you know, you can use default types. By the way, exceptions are sometimes also used for input validation, but I talked about input validation in another video. So now go and watch this other video to become a better Python programmer.